know, most recent, we were recognized with top five team in the United States. Huh. We've uh, produced 105 players in the last five years to go to college for free, right. to get their education, take part in it. But what the perception is always, hey, are we a factory for football? No. We are just a vessel that uses that, again, to bridge the gap. And of those, um, well over 25 of them, this is the first generation college students. Welcome in to Up On Game Presents Conversations with a Legend. I've been switching it up a little bit on y'all. I went NASCAR and I've gone coaching. Now I had my, my guy, Coach Scott, out of Richmond from Life Christian. We talked. We keep the theme going on with coaches. Bring in my man, Coach Masai. Y'all may know him as the mastermind and the architect of St. Francis football out of Baltimore, Maryland. I just know him as Coach Masai. I'm gonna bring my man in. Welcome to the show, Coach. We got a ton of history. We got a ton to get to and not a whole lot of time to get to it. So let's, let's jump to it. A long time ago, you took <laughs> over a historical high school broke down the history to me and everything and it's an amazing story. The things that you've done to build a program from obscurity into a national powerhouse. Let's let's start with let's start with you and Ricardo. So Ricardo is my right hand man, one of my star, he is my star protege. I, I attribute the rise and the build out of St. Francis to you two coming together and saying, here's what we're going to do. Here's how it's going to go. And that was the foundation of it. Just give me, give me the background of, of how you started, what the vision was, and how that took place at St. Francis. Well, um, first of all, I want to thank you for having us here, Absolutely. for having me here. Um, that's what it is. It's, it's called like a miracle. Um, my process to get to St. Francis and become a, their head coach was long before I even understood. I got introduced to football because I was trying to play soccer, my father thought, because I'm from a third world country, mm -hmm. uh, Ethiopia, and, and this sport was very giving to me. It allowed me to accomplish things that otherwise might not happen. Mm -hmm. So fast forward 17 years into coaching, uh, I get called to, to coach at a school that probably not anyone in America would have taken at the time. Football had existed uh, for four years at that point. One, one in 39, lost 33 in a row. The only win they had was a forfeit. Of course, um, it is a historical school. St. Francis Academy is a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. It was the oldest African-American institution in our country. First place education was founded for people of color. Mm -hmm. And uh, renegade nun founded that school to be able to educate children of slaves. And her room is still preserved in the school. That's correct. It's in the second floor. If anybody wants to come see it, it's a pretty powerful historical site. Uh -huh. um, having said that, of course, football was recent, um, and it was something that they wanted really bad because they wanted to get a lot of guys, as opposed to basketball, what they were known for, they could only affect maybe 15 to 20 players at a time. Football, as you can imagine, is 80 to 100. Right. And what that does is done for a lot of us, including yourself, kind of bridge the platform and, and get, you, get, get us an education That's you know, right. at the highest level and be able to get us started for the next 40 years of our lives. I came to St. Francis, of course, Ricardo Dickerson and I were very close and, and I had the vision, I thought that this place could be a beacon for a lot of young people within the Baltimore area then expand the DMV and then it's now national. Mm -hmm. And uh, this school has been an amazing platform for so many to accomplish dreams that they may have and use the sport as a bridge to gap that. And I mean, I could go on and on, but uh, you know, most recent we were recognized with top five team in the United States. Huh. We've uh, produced 105 players in the last five years to go to college for free, right. to get their education, take part in it. But what the perception is always, hey, are we a factory for football? No, we are just a vessel that uses that, again, to bridge the gap. And of those, um, well over 25 of them, this is the first generation college students. That's awesome. Yeah, that's an amazing thing that's happened yeah. since, since I've started it. I recall 
and you being from Ethiopia, I recall Big Sonny coming in from Nigeria and the stories of what what y'all had to do to be able to maintain him and then when you know Aaron and AJ and Namdi came but these were guys that became cornerstone and backbone guys for what it is that you were building talk about how much you sacrificed because I can recall us telling a story about how you would you would broom the stick uh, the streets you, you would sweep the streets because it was broken glass and syringes and, and all kinds of different things on the street you were just trying to create a space where y'all could work out because it was y'all were so ground level when you got there like y'all had yeah you were buying the row homes that that we could go into the details of it but I, he don't know how deep you want to go with it, but it was deep. That's correct. Right across the street from a county jail. I mean, it just seemingly, it did not look like a place where you would be able to build a national powerhouse football program. And yet, you did it. You did it. Now, some people will try to take the credit and, and pinpoint it elsewhere. But those who were there and those who knew, you were putting in a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort without a whole lot of support at all. That is correct. I mean, no, the most amazing part of it was, you know, people have visions, right? And then the hardest part of a vision is try to execute it. Uh, a lot of faith, a lot of drive, a lot of sacrifice goes into those, that process, mm -hmm. I guess you could say it. But to be honest with you, I did. And I was blessed enough to say I was at the helm. I was the head coach. But I had so many people that played a part in it. Ricardo Dickerson, the young man from Nigeria that you mentioned. Yeah. For mentioned. Now the beautiful part about it, they had a need. They had a, they needed a place to be educated. Yeah. They needed a place to have a home to lay their heads, mm -hmm. to get nurtured, to get to that college level. But what they also were hungry, they were tremendous students. Mm -hmm. So them coming from Nigeria, East Baltimore, and then the kids within the surrounding area realizing somebody thinks where you are is a blessing. Right, right. So in actuality, they're showing these young men that is right around the corner from them, mm -hmm. this can be the beacon. This can be the platform, so they bridge that gap. They're making them understand why you should be hungry to accomplish the ultimate level and to get yourself the, the highest level of education and then get yourself in life yeah. to change the trajectory of your future. So I'm, I'm grateful to hear that. It is, it is awesome to, to finally see that work, you know, pay dividends yeah. there's still a lot more work to be done and one of the most glaring things that i see that the school continues to need is not just the support from a financial standpoint but facilities mm -hmm. right like you said we would be running on the streets on we the run streets. across the street right abandoned row homes were there before right now we're tearing that down we've acquired the land we got to build a stadium so we don't have to travel every day an hour back and forth just to practice right now that's what gives us the edge it also gives us the hunger, but it's it's taken away from our ability to do study hall uh -huh. or some of the things that we Absolutely. all can utilize from to get better each day. Yeah. But yeah, it's, there's a lot of people that have continued to help our administration at St. Francis has been integral in being supportive. Um, our head of school, Dr. Turner, has been gracious enough to see and understand the vision. He's been there for 14 years, four years before I was. Mm -hmm. um, my athletic director, Nicholas Miles, uh, has been amazing support, uh, Melissa, uh, D'Amato, she was the vice principal. I mean, I can name so many academic support, the teachers, the faculty. Um, Biff Poggi, actually, yeah, was at sure. Gilman. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he caught the vision, came in, kind of uh, uh, kept it going along with me, stepped aside as the head coach, but I'm back at the helm, and it feels really good to see the work that a lot of people have put in, mm -hmm. um, and they're going to continue to put in, um, and, and to see some of these young men, the, the two that I have here today, Lamar Patterson and Deshaun Walmack. I mean, both of them have well over 20 offers apiece to get a free education. So that's what it's about. That's really what's amazing about this process. You did so many things from a genuine place. The things you said are, are, are great, but how do you turn? Because people, 
people can come from a genuine place, but you're not turning that type of school into the type of powerhouse that you turned it into. What was that pr like? What 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 was that process? It's extremely daunting, as you can imagine, Lavar. I've coached at all levels, played at the highest level. Um, it, it, it's an expensive sport. It's an expensive platform. So there's a lot of sacrifices that have to be made. A little bit personal. Um, it, 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 it took a lot to get that place become as, as great as it is. And um, it's all worth it. Um, mm -hmm. At the beginning of when you're going through it, you kind of question it once in a while. Is this the right thing I'm doing? Is this going to pay off? But then I start seeing them go to college start seeing them accomplishing the goals they want. Our first two from actually this program are playing in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. um, Gary Brightwell plays for the New York Giants. Mm -hmm. And then we have Damon Hazleton with the Houston Texans. And then there's going to be more. Now, that's a beautiful thing, but they both got their degrees. They've got accomplished the goal that and the NFL is icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to pave it forward. That's the goal, to get, get these guys, get their educations, put their families in better positions, but grab one or two kids mm -hmm. and say, let me find a way to be able to support this one and two. Collectively, the, the, the growth will allow that school to continue to thrive. Although our community supports us, but the neighboring schools don't want to play us, mm -hmm. which was in a hard process for us, which has caused us to have expenses. That's it wasn't always like that. No. They there were, were a lot of schools enjoy whooping on y'all. Eight out of the 10 games used to be somebody's homecoming. Right. So you know the term I use now, LeVar. What's that? It's no fun when the rabbit got the gun. There's no fun when the, <laughs> the rabbit, rabbit got, got the, the gun. gun. That's the truth. I mean, and now the rabbit doesn't have a gun. The rabbit got a whole <laughs> army full of yoked up diesel rabbits that, that eat meat. They don't eat grass. They, they be eating rabbits. Um, Absolutely. We're I not just, ashamed of it, right, LeVar? Right. I mean, you can't be. Yes. You can't be. And, and, and I, I find it to be interesting that Again, a lot of the people that ended up complaining about how physical you guys were and how gifted these guys were, were the teams that were basically embarrassing you guys. It was okay to embarrass St. Francis and beat up on St. Francis, and now it turns into specials where they're outraged that how, how much further ahead the, the players are, how much more gifted and how much stronger. I mean, I was watching a documentary and it was almost like listening to the way they were talking about your kids, it, it was almost like they were talking about something, something, yeah, not, not someone. Or not somebody's child. Not, not some someone's teenager, child. Teenager, yes. But like uh, something that belonged in like a cage or, you know, <laughs> needed, needed to have bars around them, you know. I mean, how's that, how does that make you feel when the perception goes from this poor little school in Baltimore that's everybody's homecoming to you now have five-star and four-star athletes all over the place? It, it feels good, but it's very disappointing because um, the schools that did decide or the institutions that didn't want to play us know that these are the same young people they wanted to attend their schools. Correct. So we're able to say, hey, come on here with little to no how, extra resources. How are they not Don't choosing our school? That is correct. Oh, how are they choosing that school over our school? Yes. I mean, and, and it's, it's, it's mind boggling, but it is what it is. But what did they say? No victims here. Uh, we don't complain. We never did. We played and we continue to do it. I tell them every day, 10 toes down. If, if, the, if the day doesn't go according to plan, you get to lay it day down, God let you rest, and then he, the sun rises again. Yeah. We duplicate what we did the day before, and that consistency. So the trust was created because of three versions I, I've, I've learned. So the time, the consistency, and the proof. Mm -hmm. I tell them that's why they stay and they be, they're committed to this goal collectively. They become selfless because they're very good. Some of them have to give up some playing time a little bit here to get the rotation going, yeah. which ultimately is going to help them long term. Mm -hmm. But a young person doesn't quite can't, can't understand that in that moment, but they trust it. Mm -hmm. So they're trusting the process. We've duplicated something that we're going to try to accomplish on a, on a long term basis. This year we implemented 
mental wellness. Okay. Uh, we every other Thursday, we do offense first. We do defense, and what we discuss it's not us. It's not based led by the coaches. We each give a story of ourselves, and then we walk out the room. Okay. They were social workers and therapists, and then they get the chance to speak about what they're feeling, what they're going through, what are the outside things that are affecting them, or what they could expect at the collegiate level, mm -hmm. and, and what the pressure, what that looks like. And it's been really wonderful. That's I, awesome. I think that's something that if, we, uh, if we're effective and we just say, don't be ashamed of it, embrace it, and learn from it, and grow from it. Cause we all had it at some point. Yeah. Something's gonna affect us the way we don't want it to be. And the, the, the word anxiety or the word, men, the word mental used to make people scared or ashamed. We tell them it's not. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that thing that we all allude to, pressure. Sure. Pressure, does it bust the pipe? Or are we able to take it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, absolutely. Well, on behalf of myself, Paysomatic, who has partnered up with me and, and my push, our push to improve communities and improve specifically within the football community. Um, they've made it so that I can can bless others and 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 help our community and, and in fact Pacematic has put up twenty five hundred dollars wow. to go towards St. Francis Academy to help and to grow what it is that you're talking about whatever it may whatever it may contribute to whatever it may be a part of the fact that that they believe in and our mission and and what we do and trying to assist our communities is has been phenomenal to be able to give a donation to to you guys knowing what the origin of what this has been for you and what it has been for so many kids very humbling moment for, for me, very humbling moment for everybody that's been involved. But I want you guys to keep going, I want you to keep building and, and pushing for what it is that you're doing. And here's a, a token to, to show that we believe in what you're doing, we support what you're doing, and and you gotta keep going because they, they need it. I mean, just us over there talking to them, talking to the young guys and, and continuing to you know, to build. I mean, Lamar, Lamar is a kid I've known since he was in sixth, seventh grade. Um, and a lot of these guys, we've known them for a long time. So this isn't really a an overnight thing where, you know, you're getting kids, you're, you're, you're recruiting kids. And I know we're, we're, developing. we're developing and building fine young men. And then a lot of times, that talent comes out because of that belief in that development and that guidance that they're receiving from people like yourself. So we appreciate that. Thank you, Lavar, and hey. everybody. Else, look, we're very grateful. We have so much gratitude. Um, you know, words can't describe it every day. The support that we do receive, for as much of the flack we take, mm -hmm. as people like yourself and organizations like um, Paysomatic, Pace yeah. that that truth truly see it, and they mm -hmm. see it for the right reason, and and helping these young men in this school is quite a blessing that I believe is going to continue to thrive. And, and for everybody that doesn't like it, there's 10 that will love it. And all I ask is people to come, visit, meet the kids, see what we do. Mm -hmm. Don't be a critic from your couch mm -hmm. or behind your computer. Come and talk to the kids. Come and talk to the, the results. Come and see the results. And after that, if you have a problem with it, then you need to reevaluate who you are. Mm. That's my, that's my thing outside of that. But we are so grateful. We, we thank you guys, yourself, of course, for having us here and, and, and being be able to tell our story. Keep going, man. Yes, sir. Keep going. Thank you. That's Coach Masai. I'm LeVar Arrington. This has been another edition of Up On Game Presents Conversations with a Legend. My coach's edition. You got to love that. Until next time. Well, better yet, before until next time, make sure subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast, make sure you're paying attention to everything that's going on because we're telling stories. That's really what this is all about. We're telling stories. We're giving you perspective, giving you angles. Sometimes success is success 
but you got to know where that success comes from. There are humble origins, humble starts to every success story that you'll ever hear. I'll never hear of a success that doesn't have a story connected to it. We're making sure we're bringing those stories your way, overcoming perseverance, diligence, all those things, faith. We like to bring that to you. You've just been put up on game. And it's been a conversation with legends. I'm a circle up with y'all. I'm LeVar Arrington. Till next time, y'all.